Join me for part two of my conversation with Jonathan Link from The Laundry Link. We talk about everything from DoorDash for Laundry, customer retention, the nighttime shift, record-breaking profits, and more. I'm curious as far as your thoughts on on Uber or DoorDash, you know, the, the gig economy, uh, because you mentioned that you're out sometimes picking up the, the laundry or you've done that in the past. And I was just wondering, what are your thoughts on outsourcing that uh, to third party? You know, I guess if, if you'd asked me four years ago, I, I would have said, why isn't there an Uber laundry? There was an Uber Eats at the time. I was like, why isn't there an Uber laundry? But now that I've actually done it myself and had drivers going out there for the past couple of years now, I'm not a big fan. I just don't think there's any way that you can control the quality. They always say we have the, the, the companies that offer those services say we have the parameters in place to make sure that you aren't going to have to worry about those things. And I, I just, there's too many variables. You also don't get that personal interaction. There will be times where a customer will say something to the driver that gets back to me. Hey, so-and-so, you know, did this or needs this. And we're there to serve them. I mean, the customer's always right is the main mantra here. I don't see how all the logistics could get handled through somebody outsourcing that. It may sound great at the start where you don't have to worry about a driver or things like that, but I would tell you to get in your personal car and go out and do the driving. People believe what they want to believe oftentimes. If somebody's saying, hey, this works and you don't have to worry about it. People want to believe it, so they do believe it. I think the most important thing to know if something is true or not is pure referencing. Find somebody who's successful doing it. I had a YouTube video about does outsourcing to rideshare companies make sense? So this is a laundry owner and he responded, DoorDash lost two of my customers' laundry as well as continuous mistakes. I'm looking for a driver to replace them as we speak. It is so hard. You know, I know you're bringing in a lot of new customers because you got strong online web presence and, but every single customer is so valuable. You know, they're spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars per year and to lose them on a regular basis yeah, and I, th I think the difference too is uh, this is a very personal service. I mean, this is your laundry that you're t you're taking care of people's laundry, and this is not. And actually, I have one of my staffers is a DoorDash person. She does the food. Even she will tell you, no, 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 that's not going to be a good plan. They're taking food out. You know what? If if there's a mistake with the food, hey, Mr. Customer, we'll you know we'll get on the phone. We'll we'll make you a new hamburger. We'll have it sent right over. You and I have that problem. I've just lost several hundred dollars worth of your laundry. We have no idea where that is. It's just too personal a service. I think the DoorDash drivers are turned off to the idea because they know that food is going into the cars. And when you're driving around with a lot of dirty laundry, there's sort of a sour, acrid smell. <laughs> and they're probably yeah. not going to be too happy about that. There's, there's an, any number of logistics that we could run through. I'm sure you've got some too. But, you know, we have picked up, I've went to a customer's house and picked up, you know, 250 pounds in one load. How is a DoorDash driver coming up in their little car going to, they're going to look at that and go, oh my God. <laughs> that's that's going to be a shocker. I'm not picking all that up. Wait, what do you mean? I, I partnered with DoorDash to do this. No, I just, it, it seems like too many logistical. It sounds like a good idea. Yeah. As soon as you start thinking about the details, that's where it starts breaking you down. Anybody new getting into this isn't going to know all those details. Like I said, Four years ago, I probably would have told you, hey, that sounds like a good way to do it. Now, I just don't believe there's any way logistically. What happens if they get to an apartment complex and they get to a gate where they can't get in the code, I mean, or they can't reach the customer? There's a simple one. I mean, any number of things. Right. They're probably just going to go home. <laughs> or I wonder, I worry about them saying, well, here's the laundry. Pfft, I'm gone. <laughs> right. Yeah, the $2 a mile didn't cover that. You visited Supersuds. That's something we're offering to clients, which is Supersuds visits. And so you could kind of see our operations. And so you visited not once, but twice. And I was just curious as far as like what your takeaways were. Certainly becoming a, a partner with the kind of investment that we're talking about. My first visit out there was, are, are these people I want to you know get into business with? I, it, it, it was a critical point. I'll come out and meet you and see your operation. Again, we actually had a software for curbside that didn't handle the pickup delivery. That's why we ended up looking. Uh, that was another group, I believe you've out of Oklahoma, now I forget their name, uh, but they were also in the laundry business, which we thought was key. So we, we thought it was worth the investment to come out, see your operation. And it, it also helped us get a better understanding of, you know, without having that software, you know, to be able to play with it beforehand, we'd come out there and you walked us through, here's how we do it. Here's how we're tracking through. Cause that's really what we were looking for was that what you were talking about earlier, it needs it tracked from start to finish just so that we can keep tabs on all this laundry that's coming through. 
even though we had no idea that we would do this amount of volume, to be quite honest. It also illustrates the importance of being in the business because then you got to see how the software matched the laundry process. And yeah. there's a lot of nuances and details. I mean, I've seen it in some competitor software where you know, the owner or the attendant wants to look at the order because there are details they want to see. But as soon as they edit it, the customer gets a text message saying, oh, your order's in the wash. And they've literally had customers drive back to the laundromat. And I'm talking about in-store drop-off. They drive back to the laundromat and say, hey, are you done with the laundry yet? It's like, it's not magic. There's no way it could have got done this quick. Or then maybe, you know, but just because if they're in the laundry business, you know, you want to look at the order for different reasons. And yeah. These little details make a difference in the customer experience because if you drive all the way to the laundromat, it's like, what are they paying for? They're paying for convenience. And if they drive there once to drop it off, drive back to, they think it's ready and it's not, that's a disappointment. Yes. And there's a lot of those little details that make all the difference. I remember there's one time you had some staffing issues and you, we had to turn off the pickup and delivery. So we turn that button off on your website. I was trying to black that out. Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. The, but And then once you're ready and things got back to where they're supposed to be, we sent out a mass text message out to your clients because it comes down to your reputation and communication. And so when you're ready, you had the right team in place. We said, hey, we're back, ready for pickup and deliveries. And it didn't even skip a beat. To your earlier, our earlier conversation here, that, that's what it was all about. We didn't want to disappoint the customers. We thought it was better to, hold on, let's just take a step here. I don't know if it's as bad everywhere else, or I've heard some people say it's worse in Georgia, but the, the worker shortage for us has been absolutely brutal. We're, we're barely able to keep up with the current volume, again, which is a great problem to have. Uh, but we, at that point, we thought it was better to take a step back. We don't want to disappoint any customers, because to your point, that online reputation and all those five-star reviews make the difference. And we didn't want anybody going, well, I was supposed to have my laundry on Thursday, but now it's Friday. So it's always, I think, better to take that step back and regroup if need be. I think setting expectations with the customers, the communication, uh, you know, letting them know, hey, this is a temporary thing because customers are ordering from you. You're their first choice because obviously you're doing a good job. It's a very personal product. A lot of laundry customers, they got their first choice and then they might have their backup, you know, if, if they're scheduled or they, they're not able to, but you, you always want to be somebody's first choice because that gave you the ability to bring them back into the fold, you know, back into the mix when you're ready for, for their business. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, we can work with a lot of our customers are such regulars. We can work with them on timelines. But at that point, we, we just felt we better take that step back for a moment. And it didn't take us long because we're, we're enjoying the phenomenal growth. Where do you see it going? Because it's a basic equation. It'll keep the customers you have and you keep adding new ones. And you're living testament to that. I've talked to some people, they go, we keep getting new customers, but our business is staying flat. Well, that's a retention issue. And then you could see the reverse. Uh, we're retaining people, but we're not getting new people. Well, that's customer acquisition. And so you're doing both. You're retaining and you're acquiring customers. So I don't see any end in sight, but what's the plan? I don't see any end in sight either. That's the good news. You know, we've got the website that you all take care of that search engine op optimized. So that's taking care of that part. And then quality and meeting those customers' expectations is keeping the customers that we have already. But honestly, I don't see an end in sight. We cover a lot larger area of Atlanta than most. I don't think the Atlanta market has even been scratched yet as far as the wash and fold pickup and delivery. I hear that over and over from our clients and we feel the same way. No matter how much business we're doing as individual laundromats, I hear it all the time. Like we're just scratching the surface. It's really going to come down for us. It's going to be handling the labor part of it. I, I just need to get more people. Our our next goal probably would be much like your, your story is going to the overnight crew. But again, the hiring issue has been our biggest challenge. You've got the, the space. It's just a matter of if you're operating at nighttime, that's the neat part about pickup and delivery is you could never achieve that without bringing laundry to your location. Absolutely. We currently have a two-day turnaround on our Pick up and delivery. I'm not sure what your roles is actually, but because we don't have an overnight crew, we actually originally started a one day turnaround. We had to move to a two day just because A, the sheer volume and B, the driver getting back later. So we don't have that ability. So we moved it to two days, which hasn't, uh, I don't think it's cost us a lot of business. Again, we've set that expectation with the customers. Your software has said, but it's, you want to do a Wednesday, you're going to be a, a Friday delivery. It's all about expectations. And 
And just uh, just kind of wrap things up, what you would say to somebody who's consider considering getting into pickup and delivery? The service side of this industry is where it's all going. People don't want to do their own laundry, which works out well for those of us. <laughs> if you're considering getting in pickup and delivery, I would say, you know, don't go in, dive into the deep end with the van and the wrapping and everything that we talked about. You can start off somewhat slow, uh, even if you were to... And I highly recommend the software because trying to do it on the whiteboard was a nightmare. You can do things with your all software, for instance, you could limit the mileage. You could, there's several things you could do to make sure that you don't get buried over in the laundry. But the, the main thing I would say is get ready for the explosion in your business. Um, getting ahead of the eight ball from a hiring perspective is I think probably the biggest challenge. And I have no doubt using the, going to the pickup and delivery model is going to, you know, blow open your wash and fold business. We're at the point now where it's like, if you're open up a pizza shop, you've got to do delivery. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be challenging serving sure. pizza and competing when other places are meeting the customers at their home. The other challenge is a driver will walk in the door and say, well, I just picked up 250 pounds from one customer, which is great news. It's going to, it's going to break your back if you don't have the labor there to take care of it, of course. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're properly staffed and so always be hiring, you know, yeah. make sure you've got the right team. Yeah. Just want to thank Jonathan Link for being on the podcast. Just tremendous growth over the years. And it's neat to see the wash and fold and pick up and deliver growing and continuing to, you've got the opportunity for overnight wash and fold processing. And I'm just curious, going back to the very beginning, just kind of wrap things up. How long did it take to really get going once you got the curbside laundries wash and fold solution? Once we got the curbside, it just it really revolutionized what we were doing. I was doing a whiteboard and people were calling in. Now we've got it where it's just a click through process for customers creating their account online, which you all have improved immensely since that originally came out. But it's made it so easy for a customer. We saw results almost immediately. That's why I, I highly recommend higher, higher, higher. <laughs> Oh, wise words. So yeah, thanks again for being on the podcast and looking forward to your continued growth. Yep. Thanks, Matt. If you'd like to learn more about the Curbside Laundries pickup and delivery solution that helped Jonathan Link, go to curbsidelaundries.com and schedule a demo.